I want you to understand something. God needs us to get a hold of our identity as the church. God is saying there's a lot of darkness around, but we've got to grab hold of the identity that God has given to us as the ecclesia, as the people that are called by his name, the people of glory that are called to dance with him, that are called to affect this earth with him, that are called to embrace the inheritance that is in our land for the kingdom of God. And so Jacob embraced this as he wrestled with God. Listen, so many people I feel like have wrestled with God over this last season. I feel like sons and daughters have wrestled. I feel like that there's been a lot of people that have gotten skeptical or cynical. Um, maybe even some people have walked away from God. But this is a time that God is bringing the Jacobs home. God is bringing the prodigals from wherever they've been living in Laban's house, calling them home, calling them back to their families, calling them back to relationship with God so that God can encounter them and give them a brand new name. I believe that this is going to be one of the most incredible seasons of seeing people lay aside their question marks, lay aside their cynicism, lay aside the things that the enemy has tried to pollute their minds with, the the bitterness or the resentment or the unforgiveness. God's going to begin to press them forward into his presence and he's going to get a hold of their hearts just like he got a hold of Jacob's heart and he turned him around and he set him on a whole new course of destiny and of inheritance. And I believe that that's what's happening today. This is going to be an amazing season to dance with the Lord and to dance the dance of the two armies, the Mahanaim. As I kind of looked into this a little bit further, I found in uh, that we're, of course, in 2021 and that the number 21 is actually linked with covenant and with contending. And this actually goes right along with the concept of the, the angel armies or the Maha Naim that God is calling us to, to work with in this season of time. Genesis 21 was a place of covenant where God um, actually fulfilled his promise to them by giving them uh, their son, Isaac. Uh, Isaac, who actually mean, his name means laughter. And I know that people have been through some tough times over this last year, but I really feel like the Lord's saying this year he's going to birth Isaac for us. He's going to birth laughter for us because very quickly we're going to see so many different things that the Lord has promised to us actually come into a time of miraculous fulfillment. I mean, we're living it here at CI. I mean, amazing things are happening. Amazing breakthroughs are happening uh, financially. They're happening with growth. They're com- happening with family members. It's just been a, an astounding season of covenant as we watch God actually just real rapidly fulfill his words. So get ready to put a smile on your face. Get ready to smile. Get ready to laugh because God is laughing with us today as he brings things into fulfillment. I also feel like Psalms chapter two, when the Lord says he sits on his throne and he laughs. Why do nations plot a vain thing? (laughs) Why do people rise up to overthrow? It says God sits on his throne and laughs. (laughs) I think this is going to be a year of laughter. It's going to be a year of joy. God's going to turn mourning into dancing. He's going to turn sorrow into joy. And that's going to come because we're going to know how to dance with him. We're going to know how to, how to be walk in covenant with him on a whole new level. Um, you know, when you speak about covenant, my husband and I, um, uh, when everything locked down last year in March, we just started doing communion every night. We started, um, seven o'clock on our vision church, CI Facebook page, just started taking communion with the body of Christ all over the world. And so every night for the last 15 months now, we've been taking communion with people all over the world, anchoring them in covenant, anchoring them in hope, because this is not a season of hopelessness or helplessness. God has never left us hopeless and he's never left us helpless. This is a season of hope. It's a season of covenant. It's a season of keeping our eyes on the Lord. And it's a season of renewing that intimate relationship with him. And so I think it's interesting in Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon, we actually have a verse, chapter 6, verse 13, that says, come back, come back, O Shulamite. That's, that's the lover of the king, the lover of the king. That's us. Come back, Shulamite, that we may gaze on you. Why would you gaze on the Shulamite as one who dances the dance of the Mahanaim? See, it was a dance of intimacy, a dance of covenant. 
that everything that we're doing right now is flowing out of this place of glory. It's flowing out of this place of personal revival. I believe that we're coming into one of the greatest seasons of awakening and revival that this earth has ever seen. But I also believe that it's starting with personal revival inside of us. And I think that what we can see all over our nation right now is that the revivals that are happening are happening driven on the sounds of, of worship. Sean Foyt and the Let Us Worship movement and, uh, and the Huntington Beach revival with worship. And uh, the Jesus in a bar down on, on Bourbon Street. If you don't know that story, um, a bar owner down in New Orleans actually um, was in a, a tough situation. He went off and kind of retreated for a weekend and had an encounter with Jesus, gave his heart to the Lord. And uh, he was a bar owner down in Bourbon Street. And uh, he thought, well, I guess now that I'm walking with Jesus, I have to sell my bar. And Jesus actually said to him, no, I have need of your bar. <laughs> kind of blows the religious spirit, <clears throat> okay? Jesus said, I have need of your bar. So he went back and he started holding worship services. A, a young man by the name of Chris Burns started doing worship services <clears throat> in this bar called Sinners and Saints, right down there in the heart of the French quarters, <laughs> right down there on Bourbon Street. And people flock in there to hear this music and they get hit by the anointing of the glory of God and they give their hearts to Jesus. And just to, to seal the deal, they've got a baptismal tank right there that they take them and they baptize them right away. <laughs> Come on, God is drawing us into this new place of intimacy, to this new place of personal revival. So I want to challenge all of us that we've got to go to a deeper place of covenant. If we want to have this, this covenant dance between us and the Lord, between us and the angel armies, I believe that God's asking us to step in to a greater place of personal revival and renewing of our first love so that we can advance the kingdom of God and we can be ready to be those that God will use. But the second thing that the number 21 really also represents is it represents contending, okay, contending. We actually see Daniel in the, in the book of Daniel. Daniel contended for 21 days before uh, he could actually receive the revelation from Gabriel, the breakthrough of that which he was praying for. And Gabriel actually said to him, I came the very first day that you prayed, but it took me 21 days to break through and to get here. And I believe that 21 is, is linked to contending and breakthrough. And in this season of time, we've got to understand that as we contend, it's contending out of that place of covenant, out of that place where we've already heard the word of the Lord, where we know what God has said, that we're standing on the promises, but we're also warring with the prophecies. Uh, it, what's also very interesting is that this year, my husband actually really felt led of the Lord to look up the Strong's Concordance number for 2021. And it's a very interesting word in the Hebrew. It's the word hotsin. Let me give you the definition of hotsin. Hotsin means to be sharp and strong as a weapon of war. Whew. Sharp and strong as a weapon of war. And in the Greek, it's the word epikurio, which means to undertake or to put your hand to. There are going to be things that we have to undertake, things that we have to put our hands to this year in contending to see breakthroughs happen. You can actually go in and you can read different chapters throughout the Old Testament and you actually find out that there's so many different chapter 21s, um, Numbers 21, where giants actually fell. Og and Sihon, the Amorite giants, fell in Numbers 21. Second Samuel 21, David takes out the remaining giants of Gath. First Kings 21, Elijah pronounces judgment on Ahab and Jezebel, and that was the beginning of the end for them. In Matthew 21, Jesus goes in and cleanses the temple, and, and, and all these different chapters, we actually see that it was an indication that long-standing giants, threatening, fierce, intimidating giants, fell in those 21st chapters. And I can tell you that right now, I, that God is setting the stage for giants to fall. Giants in media, giants in education, giants in government. I don't know how it's all going to happen, but I can tell you that God is up.